Amid much speculation, archaeologists in Egypt have unsealed a massive black sarcophagus, a huge coffin found at a construction site in Alexandria. Some have been wondering if it might reveal the body of Alexander the Great or unleash a deadly curse. In the records of human history, there were legends, and then there was Alexander the Great. His name echoed through the corridors of time, a conqueror who left an indelible mark on the very map of the ancient world. But beyond the battles and the vast empire he established, there was a mystery that had confused historians for centuries, the burial place of the man himself. The mystery of his burial place and the location of his tomb is a riddle that has baffled historians, archaeologists, and treasure hunters alike. Join us in this video as we follow the clues that may lead us to the sacred ground where Alexander the Great now rests. Alexander the Great's legacy resonates profoundly in history, casting him as a brilliant military strategist and an unparalleled conqueror. His life started as an unwavering pursuit of greatness, and even in his passing, he passed on a lasting testament to his relentless determination and unconquerable resolve. Born in 356 BC in the ancient city of Pella, Alexander embarked on a journey that would establish him as one of history's most eminent military leaders. Despite his young age, the story of Alexander, marked by daring exploits and monumental victories, continues to captivate and inspire generations. However, his early life was far from ordinary, as he was born into the prestigious lineage of King Philip II of Macedon and Queen Olympias. His upbringing was marked by greatness, with his education entrusted to none other than the renowned philosopher Aristotle. Alexander's intellect thrived under Aristotle's wise guidance, fueling his insatiable thirst for knowledge. In the esteemed halls of academia, he developed a deep passion for literature and philosophy. These elements profoundly influenced his worldview and military strategies. Tragedy struck the royal family in 336 BC when King Philip II met an untimely end. At the tender age of 20, Alexander ascended to the throne, burdened with the responsibility of a kingdom on the verge of becoming a dominant force in the ancient world. In the face of an internal revolution, he displayed remarkable leadership skills that belied his youth. With determination, he swiftly put an end to the arguments. He solidified his rule, laying the foundation for a reign that would echo through history. Conquering the mighty Persian Empire, Alexander's insatiable desire for conquest compelled him to direct his attention eastward toward the grandeur of the Persian Empire under the reign of King Darius III. In 334 BC, he embarked on his initial campaign into Asia Minor, commencing his epic journey through Persia. The Battle of Granicus River, a testament to his extraordinary military leadership, showcased Alexander's brilliance and unwavering courage as he led his troops from the front lines. Despite facing overwhelming odds, Alexander emerged victorious thanks to his ingenious tactics and unyielding determination. As his legendary expedition unfolded, subsequent battles left onlookers in shock. In 333 BC, Alexander confronted Darius III in a fierce and tumultuous encounter at the Battle of Isis. This battle witnessed the Persian king fleeing the field, abandoning his family and a wealth of riches. This resounding triumph solidified Alexander's reputation as an invincible force. However, the Battle of Gaugamela in 331 BC etched his name into the records of history. Confronted by a vast Persian army, Alexander devised a masterful strategy that exploited the vulnerabilities in Darius's forces. He crushed the Persian ranks with audacious brilliance, dismantling Darius's empire. This important moment elevated Alexander to the pantheon of history's most celebrated military tacticians. The backbone of Alexander's triumphs was the Macedonian phalanx, an exceptionally disciplined and highly effective fighting force. These soldiers formed the backbone of Alexander's army, wielding their spears with precision and unity. He commanded elite cavalry units to complement this formidable infantry, including the renowned companion cavalry led by his faithful general, Hephaestion. In 327 BC, Alexander boldly set his sights on the mystic lands of India. Here, he encountered a formidable adversary in King Porus. The battle that ensued along the banks of the Hydaspes River would test Alexander's strategic brilliance to its limits. Yet, as history would tell, 
he emerged victorious again, his tactical genius prevailing over seemingly insurmountable odds. What's remarkable is that even in victory, Alexander couldn't help but be moved by Porus's bravery, ultimately allying with his former foe. By 324 BC, the vast dominion under Alexander's rule stretched from the cradle of Greece to the timeless sands of Egypt, and it extended its grasp as far east as the enigmatic land of India. His conquests, unparalleled in their scope and audacity, etched his name into the books of history as one of the most remarkable leaders the world has ever known. However, as Alexander's ambitions soared, his tireless soldiers began to wear thin, their morale stretched to the limit by the endless journey. Even more concerning, their beloved leader's health began to wane. Alexander displayed determination in his relentless quest for greatness, as evidenced by his unyielding spirit and the enduring legacy of a man who boldly sought to conquer the world. In the vibrant spring of 323 BC, within the luxurious chambers of Babylon's Nebuchadnezzar, Alexander, the formidable conqueror whose name echoed through the ages, was trapped by a grave illness. As days passed, the shadow of death drew ever closer, casting a veil over his extraordinary journey. Word of his ailing health swiftly roamed the ranks of his devoted soldiers, those stalwart companions who had weathered countless campaigns under his banner. Outside the palace gates, they assembled, their hearts heavy with worry, offering fervent prayers for their respected leader's recovery. In those saddening final moments of his honored existence, the unconquerable spirit of Alexander twinkled like a fading star. Summoning every ounce of strength, he called on his trusted generals and closest confidants. With a voice weakened by illness, he imparted his ultimate desires, his whispered words carrying the weight of a lifetime's ambition. He implored them, meet me in the afterlife as noble and valiant souls. Tears welled in the eyes of his loyal generals, for they recognized that the world stood on the cliff of an irreparable loss. On that fateful day, June 10th or 11th, 323 BC, Alexander drew his final breath at the tender age of merely 32. In that solemn moment, the realm mourned the passing of a military genius and a visionary leader, a giant of epic proportions. The shock waves of his empire, from the hallowed lands of Greece to the far reaches of India, echoed with the realization that a hero's light had been extinguished, leaving behind a legacy that would forever inspire generations to come. Now, where is the body of Alexander the Great laid? Alexander left behind a mystery that has dumbfounded scholars and treasure hunters alike for centuries, the whereabouts of his final resting place. While historical records suggest that he was buried in the sands of Alexandria, Egypt, the exact location remains hidden beneath layers of time. One of the earliest hints to unravel this mystery can be found in Alexander's aspirations, the Siwa Oasis, a sprawling desert region where gentle breezes appear to bear the accumulated knowledge of centuries, holds the key. Here, an oracle proclaimed Alexander to be the offspring of Zeus, a moment of immense importance. It is recorded that just before his passing, Alexander ardently expressed his desire to be interred in the revered area of the temple of Zeus Ammon, nestled deep within the core of the Siwa Oasis. This sacred sanctuary was where divine favor had been bestowed upon him. However, fate and human ambition often diverge. Alexander's demise ignited a fierce power struggle among his successors. They covered his body not merely for sentiment, but as a symbol of their dominion over his vast empire. His grand vision and insistent conquests had left an empire spreading from Greece to India. His body, embalmed and revered, became a prize to be won. This contest for control ultimately led to his body's journey from Babylon to Alexandria, where he was destined to be entombed. But the exact spot of his burial in this bustling Mediterranean city has remained tricky through the ages, slipping through the fingers of archaeologists and historians. The theories abound, like the grains of sand in the Egyptian desert. Some believe the tomb was hidden beneath Alexandria's sprawling urban development, its secrets masked by the march of time. Others suggest it might have been lost to the waves, submerged by the relentless rise of the sea over the centuries. The second clue revolves around the account of Ptolemy, a trusted general in Alexander's inner circle who eventually rose to power in Egypt following Alexander's passing. 
Ptolemy's actions are nothing short of audacious. After Alexander's demise, Ptolemy took a bold step. Instead of allowing Alexander's body to journey back to Macedonia, as tradition might dictate, he intercepted it. He transported it to the captivating land of Egypt. The ancient city of Memphis, once the grand capital of Egypt, became the first resting place for the great conqueror's remains. However, Ptolemy's ambition did not stop there. He later orchestrated a monumental transfer. Alexander's body, now a symbol of power and prestige, found its permanent abode in the city that bore the conqueror's very name, Alexandria. This city was born from Alexander's vision and named in his honor. A more fitting resting place for a king who had reshaped the world would be hard to find. Ptolemy didn't simply snatch Alexander's body for selfish reasons. He claimed divine approval for his actions, citing the oracle at a Serapium. This temple was a sanctuary dedicated to Serapis, a deity blending facets of both Greek and Egyptian gods. Ptolemy cleverly sought to forge a spiritual connection between himself and Alexander. By securing the oracle's blessing, he aimed to legitimize his rule over Egypt, creating a powerful link between his reign and the legacy of the mighty Alexander. The audacity and cunning of Ptolemy's scheme and preserving Alexander's body and reputation in Egypt leave us with a captivating historical puzzle that we continue to solve to this day. The third clue uncovers a captivating tale, one that connects Alexander to a multitude of illustrious visitors. These ancient witnesses claim to have gazed upon the hallowed resting place of this legendary figure within the confines of Alexandria. Among these distinguished guests was Julius Caesar, who, in the turbulent year 48 BCE, ventured to Alexandria during his epic clash with Pompey in the pain of civil strife. Notably, Cleopatra, the glorious ruler of Egypt and a prominent member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, sought an alliance with Caesar. She too, it is whispered, paid homage at Alexander's tomb, her presence a testament to the enduring allure of the Macedonian conqueror. No historical evidence supports the claim that Cleopatra took Alexander the Great's body out of the tomb and placed it in the Great Pyramid of Giza. Cleopatra did visit Alexander's tomb, but moving his remains to the Great Pyramid is a fictional idea without any basis in reality. Later, her destiny would intertwine with that of Mark Antony, another visitor to the tomb. Augustus, the venerable statesman who conquered Antony and Cleopatra, ultimately becoming the inaugural Roman Emperor, also forms a part of this mysterious narrative. It is recorded that all of these luminaries not only offered their profound respects, but also bestowed sacrifices and precious gifts upon the tomb in moments of reverence. History further mentions the scholarly presence of individuals like Strabo, the astute geographer, who left behind an account describing the tomb as a grand mausoleum housing a glistening sarcophagus adorned with precious metals and jewels. Strabo marveled at the mixed-up mosaic floors and the fine frescoes that adorned the inner chambers, vividly portraying Alexander's epic life and conquests in vivid detail. The presence of such illustrious visitors and the wonder with which they approached this mysterious tomb raises questions about the true nature of the final resting place. Was it a genuine tribute to the great conqueror or a carefully crafted political stage designed by the clever Ptolemaic rulers to support their authority through association with Alexander's legacy? One of the most compelling and confounding aspects of the search for Alexander's tomb lies in the complicated nature of the ancient city of Alexandria itself. Built by the architect Dinocrates, whom Alexander chose, this city was a masterpiece of urban planning, a blend of Greek aesthetics and Egyptian culture. With its grand monuments, libraries, and temples, Alexandria stood as a testament to Hellenistic grandeur. Within this spreading metropolis, the royal quarter was the heart of power and culture, where the royal palaces, the Serapeum, dedicated to Serapis, a deity associated with healing and protection, and the mausoleum all converged. But as centuries passed and conquerors came and went, the city evolved, and its layout became obscured. The once illustrious tomb might have been swallowed by urban expansion, hidden beneath layers of newer construction and sediment deposited by the Nile River. Could the tomb discovered by scientists in Alexandria belong to Alexander the Great or his successor? In the bustling district of C.D. in Gober in eastern Alexandria, scientists found a tomb suspected to belong to Alexander the Great. 
A team of archaeologists uncovered a massive granite sarcophagus, unlike before in this ancient city. This impressive tomb is nine feet long, five feet wide, and six feet tall. It was hidden 16 feet beneath the surface, sealed with a strong layer of mortar. What's truly remarkable about this find is its age. This grand sarcophagus dates back to the Ptolemaic era, from the 4th to the 1st century BCE, a time filled with empires and legends. The contents of the sarcophagus have sparked curiosity and speculation. Inside, there are not one, not two, but three skeletons, a hint of a forgotten past. Also, there's a mysterious reddish-brown liquid that has shocked the public. But the big question is, could this discovery hold the remains of Alexander the Great or one of his successors? Now, there's a thought-provoking theory suggesting that the final resting place of Alexander the Great might not be Alexandria, but the enchanting city of Venice, Italy. According to this idea proposed by British historian Andrew Chugg, Alexander's mummified remains could be hidden beneath the altar of St. Mark's Basilica, a famous church. This theory connects several intriguing clues and historical threads. First, St. Mark and Alexander are symbolically linked to the image of a winged lion, a symbol of power and royalty. Venice's emblem features this same winged lion. Second, Venice had strong trade connections with Alexandria and a keen interest in preserving its cultural heritage. This interest sometimes led to the acquisition of precious relics. The story of relocating St. Mark's remains from Alexandria to Venice in 828 CE adds to this narrative. Each discovery, every artifact found, adds a new piece to the puzzle. Whether we will ever definitively locate Alexander's final resting place remains uncertain, but the plot surrounding this historical question continues to captivate the hearts and minds of those drawn to the legends of this conqueror and the ancient city that bears his name. The quest to locate Alexander's final resting place is not just a matter of historical curiosity. It's a journey into the past that has captivated people's imaginations from all walks of life. Scholars, archaeologists, and adventurers worldwide have dedicated their lives to solving this enduring mystery. This relentless pursuit is fueled by the desire to unveil the truth about a man who, in his short 32 years, left an indelible mark on human history. Still, some theorists propose that the Ptolemaic rulers intentionally hid the tomb to protect it from desecration or looting. This belief is reinforced by the secrecy surrounding the tomb during its prime. The location was a closely guarded secret, and only a select few had access. One interesting hypothesis is that the tomb might lie within the legendary subterranean labyrinth of Alexandria. This complex maze contains an abundance of treasures, artifacts, and the remains of notable figures. While this labyrinth has eluded modern discovery, it continues to be the stuff of myth and legend. The search for Alexander's tomb continues with modern technology playing a significant role. Ground-penetrating radar, drone-based aerial surveys, and advanced archaeological techniques have all been deployed to sift through Alexandria's history layers. These tools, coupled with the expertise of contemporary archaeologists, have provided hope that the tomb will be found one day. The discovery of Alexander's tomb would be a historical sensation, answering age-old questions and uncovering some of the enduring mysteries surrounding his life and legacy. Beyond the academic excitement, it would offer insights into ancient architecture, culture, and the artistry of the time. The treasures within could rewrite history books and provide a tangible connection to the man whose exploits have captivated generations. The saga of Alexander's tomb continues, and with each discovery, we draw closer to the heart of one of the greatest mysteries of ancient times. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more interesting videos.